This on my right side is the 2022 Hyundai Tucson. It is the new generation Tucson. It is probably one of the most interesting vehicles and one of the most sold models from the Hyundai um, lineup globally. And today I'm gonna compare it to the outgoing generation on my left side to see if it's actually worth over this. That's the goal for today's video. We're gonna find out what do they offer? How do they compare in terms of space, tech features, and most importantly, how do they drive on the road? Because this is technically the first Hyundai Tucson hybrid and it is an all-wheel drive. So we're gonna find out how this thing handles on the road. It feels better than that. Now, right off the bat, the exterior, you can tell the difference right away. The Tucson, the outgoing model, is still an amazing vehicle, but the new model here, it is game changer in every level. They have completely redesigned this thing from ground up. And this is made possible thanks to our great friends at Aurora Hyundai, a Hyundai dealership located in Aurora, Ontario, Canada. They were kind enough to provide us with both vehicles to compare them just for you. And guess what? Just because you're watching this video, you can get a promotion or discount from their dealership just by following the link in the description box. Don't forget, the dealership is located in Ontario, Canada, specific in Aurora. And this video is not sponsored in any way by this dealership. These are my thoughts and my review based on what I think about these two models. So let us begin and let's talk about first the exterior. What has changed? Well, the first thing you notice is the front end. Now we have a more aggressive looking Tucson, more futuristic, more tech oriented. That's what I see about this vehicle. The grill, the lights. Imagine this thing coming behind you at nighttime with those beautiful front lights. It is completely different. Manufacturers tend to say new, but sometimes they don't bring us something that is new. In this case, this thing has been redesigned fully on the side profile. You got that sharp looking uh, design on the left and right side, the rear end as well. We're gonna talk about that. Most importantly, the front end, the lights. How aggressive this thing looks compared to the outgoing model. The difference is noticeable right away. You don't have to look far to see the difference right in the front. They could be completely two different vehicles, in my opinion. And you got new technology. The difference also starts with the key fob. Now we have a new redesigned key fob, similar to the ones that you see in the Hyundai Sonata. And most importantly, this year, they're offering is the park in and park out option with the new Tucson. Some people find that useful, some don't. I think it's still cool to find such technology in a standard vehicle for the average individual. And that's what I love about the new Tucson. It is offered in across the Hyundai uh, platforms, something they missed in the Kia platforms. But in here, we have it with the new Tucson and you have a remote start as well, which the older model did offer as well. Now, let's talk about the trims. What do you get in the US and Canada? What kind of price are we talking about between the older and the new one? In the US, the base model starts at $25,000 and you get an eight inch color touchscreen. You get an, a wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay with the base model, LED headlights and daytime running lamps, and a four 17 inch alloy wheels and the rear occupant alert. The top trim in the US, it's called the Hybrid Limited, which is the one we have for today's video, but it's technically called differently in the US. It has the H-Track all wheel drive system, a 10.25 inch touchscreen navigation system, surround view, remote start parking, as well a parking distance warning and heated steering wheel and rear seats so that is technically the fully loaded for the US which starts at $37,000 now let's look at the Canadian version the Canadian model starts at 27,600 Canadian dollars of course that is for the essential which is technically the base model and the same as the US you get an 8 inch display audio touchscreen, you get a wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, forward collision warning, something that you're missing in the US base model, and of course the LED headlights, something offered in the US trim as well. Now the top trim, which is the one that we have for today's video, it is the ultimate hybrid all-wheel drive, and most importantly, this is tagging the fully loaded, it starts at $41,000, and that is Canadian. And similar to the one in the US, you get the 10.25 inch display, and the remote start parking assist, blind view monitor as well, and the highway driving assist. So quite a lot of tech features for that kind of money. This thing is loaded to the teeth, and that's what I love about this vehicle. Now the next question is, 
how do they compare in terms of the engine? So let's talk about the engines next. The older generation, the 2021 model, had a 2.4 liter engine and made 181 uh, horsepower. Meanwhile, the torque was at 175. The new model makes 178 torque and 187 uh, uh, power. Meanwhile, the combined MPG for the older one was 25. And this year, we have a more fuel efficient vehicle goes up to combined. 28 miles per gallon which is quite impressive and it uses an eight-speed automatic transmission for the 2.5 liter engine the new tucson offers the h-track all-wheel drive system it also uses a variable torque split clutch with active torque control between the front and the rear axle for this year there's going to be a hybrid and a plug-in hybrid the hybrid powertrain has a 1.6 liter turbocharged gasoline engine produces 177 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque with an estimated of 226 total system combined horsepower the hybrid powertrain also produces an estimated of 258 pound feet of torque from the combined hybrid powertrain with a 44.2 kilowatts electric motor and a 1.49 kilowatts an hour battery pack the new tucson it is more fuel efficient it is more powerful and most importantly you'll be getting a plug-in hybrid. That's the important part about this new vehicle compared to the outgoing model. Not just the hybrid version, and it is more fuel efficient compared to the outgoing model, but it's also available in a plug-in hybrid. At this moment, we don't have a plug-in hybrid yet, but Hyundai has promised they're gonna deliver one to the customers in the coming months, and I'll be able to actually review it compared to the standard hybrid. For people that are interested in a more exciting Tucson, guess what? This year, Hyundai will provide to buyers an N-Line Tucson, which uses a four-cylinder turbocharger and it makes 187 horsepower. It's gonna use 19-inch wheels as well. There's gonna to be tons of outside parts to actually make it different from a standard uh, Tucson. But as of now, we don't have anything. I did see some pictures online and it looks quite aggressive. They've done a fantastic job. Looking forward in the coming months to we'll probably review one and maybe compare it to something more interesting. But that's something that they're offering you with a 2022 model. There's also a great warranty. In the US, I read, they offer up to 100,000 miles and the drivetrain, I believe, was about seven years or 60,000 miles and 30,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Not sure if it's the same for Canada, couldn't find any details, but that's something that is offered to the US buyers. Now the next question is, is the older generation better in terms of the size or is the new one different compared to the outgoing model? The 2021 model was 176 inches long. The new one, it's 6.5 inches longer. It is 0.6 inches wider and 0.6 inches higher. The wheelbase is 3.4 inches longer compared to the outgoing model. And the cargo volume in this, behind the second row, it is 7.7 .7 cubic feet more compared to the outgoing model. So the older model was 31 cubic feet of space. Meanwhile, the new one is 38 Point seven, And the overall passenger volume, it is six cubic feet of space more compared to the outgoing model. Besides the uh, overall power delivery, the hybrids and plug-in hybrid, and of course the design difference, there's also a massive difference in terms of space. So now you're getting more space behind the second row and overall cargo volume compared to the outgoing model. So this here, definitely, it's worth looking over the outgoing model. Now let's move on to the rear end and let's talk about how different is the new model compared to the older generation. Well, first of all, first thing you notice the tail lights, so much more different, more futuristic. And I love how they're like clean and at the same time they have that crisp looking. And most importantly, you have the lights here. Right now I have the full headlights on and you can see this is turned on for nighttime. It looks stunning, it looks different, very futuristic and completely different from the outgoing model. The turning signal now is moved right at the bottom and you also have the reverse lights as well but as you can see beautiful rear end and it kind of resembles like a, a coupe version i'd say maybe like a mercedes glc that kind of design love what they've done with this most importantly now you don't see the exhaust pipes completely you have this nice diffuser at the bottom beautiful design overall now let's talk about convenience well first of all you have the option to open through the key fob standard vehicle then you also have the button located in here you press that it should open up um i couldn't find online if it has the hands-free tailgate um 
but I tried it and it didn't open. Maybe it doesn't offer with this package. And most importantly, for the second row, because now you have so much more space in here, you have this lever located to the side, you pull this to fold the second row. There you go. And then you have one more on this side to fold the other seat. So you have full access. Underneath here, there is more space. And most importantly, now you have a tire mobility kit offered with this package and of course for the toe as well in the front and it comes with the net for this area so you can cover it if you have stuff that you don't want to move around you have that option now one thing i noticed with this is that it's kind of tight in here for me that's one problem but you do that space and let's start with the second row in here, still very comfortable, but overall you're getting more cargo space uh, in terms of the interior, the front seats and the second seats in the new generation. But even here, you're still nice and comfortable, tons of space. In terms of tech features, you still have heated seats in the older generation, so does the new one. And this doesn't have any USB port with this package. This is not a fully loaded, but you can tell a bit of a difference in terms of quality. Now let's jump into the actual new generation. The new generation has a beautiful interior. They've done a fantastic job. There's two USB ports in the center if you want to charge phones. And most importantly, this offers heated seats as well. And you have interior lighting, beautiful interior leather. And what they've done in this case, you have this cloth and then leather mixed together, multi-colors multi all over. We have beautiful audio system as well, premium audio system with this package. And most importantly, it has a different feeling inside and there is a massive panoramic roof going all the way across, more extended. The side third window, it's actually a little bit bigger than the outgoing model. And most importantly, you can fold the actual seat here so you can get more space and get more comfortable. Um, but the actual seat here, but the seat overall cannot be moved back and forth. Okay, let's move on to the interior because things here change quite a lot and I love what they've done with this vehicle. First of all, let's talk about the seats. Fantastic design, very comfortable, kind of like bucket just a little bit, but yet very comfortable. Most important, you get power seats on both sides and you get bolster adjustment for the driver's side, but not the passenger. Everything has changed here from the digital cluster, the digital infotainment system. Now we have this massive screen in the center, which is technically touch screen all the way through from the actual infotainment display. And then around this area too, it is digital. Let me start it up for you. Very familiar uh, user interface, like very similar to other uh, Hyundai as well. Then we have the center console in here where you have the driving uh, buttons for reverse neutral drive and park as well. Right in the center, we have auto hold park uh, button as well here. It has power hand brakes. Most importantly, we have heated seats, ventilated seats, heating steering wheel in here. And then you have the uh, driving. Then we have the actual uh, 360 camera. You have a button located in the center. Most importantly, if you hold that button for the camera, what it does is it turns on the uh, assist. And then once you leave the vehicle, take the key with you, press and hold the uh, parking button and it will park the vehicle for you. Very smart. So once you find it in a perfect position, you can do that by pressing and holding the uh, P button which shows the park and the camera. And the camera is of course 360. We have bird's eye view in here or 360 surround view, whatever you want to call it. Different modes as well. As you can see, left and right side we have cameras on each side mirror very impressive very similar to what you've seen before and then we have android auto and apple carplay most importantly they are wirelessly so you don't have to actually plug in your phone although it does have two usb ports right in here and then you have a wireless charging pad which is kind of standard with the uh, vehicles from hyundai and then this is very responsive i wish the screen was slightly bigger it's a bit small it looks like a phone in some ways uh, but it's still very responsive and most most importantly, you have quite a lot of options in here, very intuitive built-in navigation system. And then as you can see, user interface is very similar to uh, other Hyundai vehicles. We have a lay mode as well, climate unit. Uh, there's a climate unit right in here and then we have another climate unit and then we have the diffuse uh, option as well should have been slightly bigger than this other than that still fantastic this area here everything you see in here it is touch screen it is dual climate zone and then the rest of these buttons on this side are of course for heated seats it has downhill assist as well and then we have different driving modes and then driving modes once you change them it changes the layout because it has that massive 
uh, digital cluster as you can see. Now let's talk about the actual clusters. You can see a beautiful digital cluster and then we have the blind spot assist monitor which is offered in other vehicles from Hyundai and then you can see from uh, both sides and then you have different driving modes. Driving modes you can switch between drive and terrain. In drive we have eco, you have sport and smart and then in terrain we have snow, we have the mud and sand as well and it also has downhill brake control. Uh, and downhill assist as well. So lots of features and the layouts changes based on the driving modes. Uh, that way you get a different feeling for each experience. Love that beautiful cluster. It is sharp, it is clean. Let's talk about the steering wheel, driver assistant package. Uh, we have cruise control, you have the lane assist as well. And then on this side we have for the volume control, different modes for the radio and so on. So this is nice steering wheel. We have pedal shifters as well. You can have some fun. Um, love that they offer pedal shifters with a hybrid. I'm interested to find out how this transmission works in manual mode. Let's start this here. Let's trade into electric. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put the driving mode into eco and then let's see. I want to see if it actually drives on the battery alone. The battery is a half charged. It's working on EV right now. That's impressive. Let's put on, duh, 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 duh. we're going to put on the, come on, I want to see the hybrid. There we go. Now we can see. Let's reset everything. It says, duh, 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 duh. no, I don't need the radio. Okay. And da, da, da. let's set trip info is set uh, hybrid. Come on, here we go. Now it's fully electric. This is interesting. This is really interesting. It's fully electric. Oh, now it turned on the engine. So it actually tells you when it's in EV mode and it shows the energy flow here as well. But when you don't push it hard, it goes straight into EV. So it drives solely on the battery. That's pretty amazing. Right now it's in EV only. I have it in eco mode. You do hear the electric motor a little bit in here for sure. Um, of course, it's an electric machine technically. and now it turned on. It's not um, easy to figure out whether it's an EV or not unless you look at the actual cluster. So you don't actually feel the difference. In some vehicles, it, when it switches from EV to petrol, you can feel that difference. And here, you don't see it as much. I like this thing. It actually feels very much like an electric vehicle. I'm not saying it's the same as a Tesla, but it does give you that experience. I love this massive screen here. Um, the infotainment display and of course this area it kind of looks like a full screen that's why I get confused a bit but it's not um, it's only on this part here that is the screen and this is actually the touch buttons for uh, everything that was turned into low don't want to put too much pressure onto the battery because we want to find out how good this thing so I switched the actual uh, the trip, I, I put it to zero. It's quite impressive, this thing. I like it. I like it quite a lot. Um, it also has a driver system package. We've seen this, the HDA that they use in other vehicles, like, uh, for example, in uh, the uh, Genesis has the same thing in here. It doesn't have a heads-up display. Tire pressure, a lot of information. And it actually shows you into the cluster, the lanes, and it shows the vehicle. Um, it keeps you within the lanes. It's a very smart technology. We have blind spot assist, lane assist, gap assist as well. Amazing for trip. If you put it into driver assistant package, if you turn on the cruise control, you're actually far better because then you're saving much more, you're saving battery because when the engine and uh, the computer work together and they make sure that it is very fuel efficient compared to you where you're just pressing the gas pedal most of the time.
I like this thing. I like how it drives. It's comfortable. Uh, it's different. It's a different experience from any other Hyundai vehicles, to be honest. I, I can see, I can feel that difference. The entire interior, it's so comfortable. For someone my height, it feels spacious inside. I love that. Uh, it feels comfortable. A straight pipe. Mitsubishi just passed pretty loud. Don't hear it as much. It is quiet inside. Uh, you can see every information you need into the cluster when it's turned into EV. Right now it's working with the uh, electric motor and the uh, petrol to uh, basically to drive the vehicle. It's quite impressive. It's quite impressive. I must say they're doing, they're doing amazing things with this um, vehicles and when you get a hybrid and a plug hybrid option as well this thing it's going to be amazing i can't even imagine how much faster the plug-in hybrid could be compared to this now this is a hybrid all-wheel drive the rav4 prime could be the closest competitor to this thing um, but only with a plug-in hybrid i'm going to wait till that plug-in hybrid option comes and we're going to talk about how this two compare There is a bit of a power kick in here. You can you can tell the difference when you push it. I only have an eco mode. Once uh, the road opens up, we're gonna push it into sport mode a little bit to see. But even in right now in eco mode, it, it has a bit of a kick and it feels quick. It feels pretty quick um, for for what it is. Now again, when I say quick, I'm not talking about a thousand horsepower here. We're talking about a family SUV, and that's what I mean by quick. It's there's no um, there's no sluggishness, slugginess, and there is no uh, there's no lack of power in here. This is one thing I, I have to say. I'm quite impressed. Some things that I don't like about this. First of all, I'm not the biggest fan of the buttons here. You guys know if you watch my videos, I complain a lot about that, and I know because I just don't like buttons. I like a shift knob, something that the older generation offered. And another thing I notice in here is that the older generation had a diff lock. We don't see it in this generation. Uh, I don't see a differential lock compared to the older model, which did have a differential lock. That's another thing that it's missing in here. I couldn't find it anywhere, but like from the buttons here, I do have traction. We have downhill assist as well, downhill brake control, um, but I don't have the actual differential lock in there. Whoa! So. At first, he used the EV and the petrol, and you can feel that power kick, and then he went fully on petrol. So there is a bit of a power kick. Um, it feels nice, it feels very, very quiet. That engine feels very, very quiet in my opinion. They have done everything right in this car in my opinion it, when it comes to the design itself that's a question that's a subjective thing because you might not like it i like it someone else will like it hyundai is bringing out some amazing vehicles and you can say whatever you want but even their reliability uh ratings have gone up quite a lot yes some of the older models had some uh not very good ratings but now things have changed they're bringing out some amazing they're making the market very very competitive they're offering so much like look at this beautiful thing like this is impressive it is quite impressive in my opinion they've done a fantastic job the vehicle is beautiful inside there's a huge difference in terms of driving dynamics comfort level between this and the older generation absolutely when you take them for a test drive back to back you're going to say the exact same thing this thing has a difference in power um, one thing I did notice in here I don't have a full EV button that it only works in EV because some uh, hybrid uh, vehicles offer that this doesn't have it uh, let's turn off traction and completely everything okay let's put it into manual mode into third you don't hear the engine at all You don't hear the engine at all in here. Special thanks for this video goes to our great friends at Hyundai Aurora, a Hyundai dealership located uh, in Aurora, Ontario, Canada. And again, if you need a, if you're looking to purchase one, you can get a promotional discount just because you're watching this video. And the only thing you have to do is follow the link in the description below. With that in mind, thanks for watching, guys. Take it out there, go out there and take it for a test drive. This thing is 
going to impress you a lot because I am impressed with this. Fantastic job, I have to say. They've done a great job with this vehicle. That in mind, stay safe. Cheers.